We um oh you did let me see I'm done.
Driver of P1335, you're asked to move your vehicle. Driver of 1335, you're asked to move your vehicle.
Good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome each and everyone here this afternoon to the celebration service of our late brother Ted Lex Holder. On behalf of the Richmond Park Seventh day Adventist Church, we do express condolences to the family members. And we just want to show you that one of these days, death will be eradicated. Christ promised that he will come and he will take his people home. All the more reason why each and every one of us must make sure that our calling and election is sure by securing our lives in Christ Jesus. So as we celebrate his life today, I pray that we do some self-introspection. We look at our individual lives. And what he's seeing is a question. And you can ask this sort of question. Am I happy with how things are going with me and Jesus? As we celebrate, may we do so this afternoon. And this is the half day of the emperor. That's about what I suppose to lift your hearts and the world. Mighty God, the one who will be there from moving up our the one who created this universe. You, God, who created our lives, human beings, and this on this planet, their Father, to take care of it. You give us life. You give us hope. We are thankful to God that we have this opportunity to be here this afternoon in spite of the circumstances. You've been good to us. We have come, dear Father, as we mourn, we have come also to celebrate the life of our departed brother, friend, cousin, relative, Ted. I pray to God that your Holy Spirit would be present this afternoon, that will comfort the hearts of those who mourn. Help us, dear God, to remember, to understand, and to be confident in your promise that if we are faithful to you, there is a hope of resurrection. We have the hope, dear God, that our loved ones who die in Christ will live again. And if we are faithful, we would see them again. May this blessed hope comfort us, each one of us, this afternoon. I pray to God that your Holy Spirit will take full control of the proceedings here this afternoon, that whatever is done, will be done to bring honor and glory to your name. And indeed, there might just be someone present here this afternoon who need to hear that invitation one more time to accept you as Lord and Savior of your lives. Even as we face death, help us to understand that every one of us, one day, will have to answer the call of death. What is more important is our state, our stand with you at that time. Give us and help us to take this opportunity this afternoon, dear Father, to make our calling and election show with you. We present the family before you.
Comfort them. Comfort everyone, dear Father. Take control of this of the proceedings here this afternoon. May your name be glorified in prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing as we have the opening hymn. When we all we have the first scripture reading by Career and Frank. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Therefore, 
our beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you. Amen. All right, we have the program in our hands, the program there is appropriate for one another, so we now have tribute and song by Joseph Carroll, followed by tribute and poem by Amara Adams, second scripture reading, and another tribute by... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the family group, this is the song that I want them to listen to be careful to use being in a And the seeds like forever A night of confusion Has been so long Your ship has lost anchor For the storm that you drifted Just hold on to Jesus And he will ride out of the storm Ride out your storm God is there with you You Thank you. 
thoughtless and hardworking to the very end. The chugging sound of your bullies can be heard. I go with mountain eh? you would say. Oh, how we wish you were here today. As I lie in bed at daybreak, I hear your voice saying, good morning. Your laughter, your smile. If only you could return for just a while. As I sit and I write, streaks of water brush down my face. You left us without a trace. This is not goodbye, Ted. Memories of you will never escape our head. May your soul rest in peace, Ted, as I extend my condolences to all families and friends. To Ted, on my behalf and the Thomas family's behalf, I leave you with this scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Thank you.
Gen Z, tell them how to collect me. God sent that message and said to tell them, if you cannot pay a dollar, don't bother. The Saturday morning before Dad woke, there was a knocking at the door. Ted was there. That is how to show you the heart that Ted had and the respect he had for his dad. Ted had my brother, my son, sorry, as his own biological brother. Many times Ted will say to me, Tanti, you know, I saved my real life from dying in the hands of wicked men. I remember one day he called me and he said, I was right on time when they were to throw the, the, the kerosene oil on him and ready to scratch the match to light him. And Ted was the one who jumped in and said, Boy, is my brother all going to let? And that was the heart of Ted. Ted was loving and he was kind. And uh, I believe if Ted had the time to return, he would say to his relatives and friends to live. Good afternoon, everyone. This tribute is from Nadia, my co worker, to his departed. Oh, my teddy bear, my protector, my twin, my helper, my brother, where can I begin? I am lost for words as I sit here trying to write this tribute. The tears are just rolling down my face as I struggle to see what I'm doing. 
I can't even think straight. I'm still in disbelief, and it's hard for me to really accept that you are no longer here with me. You were my little brother, but you didn't act as such because you believe you have to be there for all your sisters, whether they are older or young. You didn't fail to play your role in our lives. You protected us as a father would. No one could have messed with us and get away, as you believe that you are the strongest brother in the world. You stepped in when my husband would travel out on the seas to work. You were an inspiration to my two children, Sarai and Shine, whom you also gave nicknames Rara and Uncle Shines. You were their playmate. Every time you came around, I knew my day will be an extremely loud one as you will ramp with them all over the house until you begin to wheeze. You will have your exercise session with them, which you rarely enjoy. Even when you were as serious with them to master the exercise, they would laugh until you get mad with them. They just love to do that to you. Shine would always say, Mommy, I want to eat all my food and exercise to get big and strong like my uncle Teddy. Mommy, my uncle, strong enough. I am coming like him. Sarai had a passion to become a gymnast and would always help with her balance and he would always help her with her balance and even some moves. She misses you. My teddy bear, what do I do now? What do I say every time they ask for you? When Shine realized that you were born, he said to me, he said to me and his uncle Enis, you know I, would, I could fix my uncle. I could fix him with my daddy's screwdriver and hammer. And you know, I will bathe him because he would have some blood. If only it was possible. I know Shine would do anything to get him back. Now all, now all he walks around saying, is that his uncle has called to be a real help now. We all I remember the days we would take mommy's change when she put them down and would go to Miss Bob's shop and buy snacks and share them with me. Then when mommy asked who took the change, she put down, you would turn around and say, Mommy, me and Nancy been hungry and we buy something to eat and make me get lashes. I remember the day when he got lashes for going to the river, I laughed. Then, Mommy sent you to help me wash the wells, and he took the frying pan and gave me one lash in my head. Then he said sorry, only because he wanted revenge, because I laughed. I could remember the first time I took you to school to help. I could remember the first time I took you to school to help. All the teachers thought you were my husband. When I asked why they thought so, they responded, it was because of our closeness. Our two younger sisters used to get mad because you would constantly call or come by my home to complain about what they did wrong. We did many things together, and this makes me miss you even more. I thought you were going to grow old together and get a chance to look back and laugh at our silly mistakes. March 3rd, your birthday. I promised myself that I would bake a cake just because you deserved it. So I hustled home from work and did just that. The cake was so big that it couldn't even get that I couldn't even get it in the box. You told me, Nice, just leave it so. I will carry it and I eat it all. As I said, happy birthday to you, you said. Well, give me a hug now. As we hug, you said, Nats, we love you now. And I said, I know. You didn't want to let me go. As, as usual, I said, boy, let me go now. And we both laughed. I didn't know that would be the last time you'd hug me and I would hear I love you from your lips. Every time you left for the land, I would know as you never passed my gate straight, you had a secret call for me. When you were going up, you would shout out, Woo! -hoo! 
to let me know you are going up. And when you're coming back, you would shout out, woo-hoo, again. Then stop so I, so I can come out. Booking show, whenever I come out, you would ask, you cook, making sure that Sylvia is begging for food. And you tell me around Zane. I say, listen for your call every day. Whenever you are finished eating, you will turn to me and say, Boy, Nas, your food always doesn't remind me of mommy, eh? And I will respect, I will respond. I learned from the best. The second, as I got home from church, you called and asked me to take you to the health center because you didn't feel well. I was tired, but I took you without hesitation. We want to go to my land the next day, so I got up. I sent you a WhatsApp message saying, Good morning, it's Acre's time. Then you called and said, You didn't sleep at all, and you need to go back to the health center. I didn't know it was the last time we'll be traveling in my car. On our way, you said, Nice, boy, you feel like you're going to die. And Jerry said, Teddy, Hold on, we are almost rich. I never knew you were going to say goodbye to me. I never knew you were saying goodbye to me. I never knew that was the last time I would see you walk. I never knew you weren't coming back to me. You knew what it would do to me, but you left anyway. That Wednesday morning, you shut into a million pieces. I would never be the same because my teddy bear is no more. Thank you for being my brother. Thank you for loving me the way you did. Thank you for helping me mold to rise and shine the best way you knew how. I know life would be forever changed as I love having, te I love having my teddy bear more than anything. I know that you live a beautiful life and I will miss you every day for the rest of my life. We will meet again, my brother, but for now, take your rest in perfect peace. I will forever love you, my one and only teddy bear, as there will be, as there will never be another like you. May his soul rest in peace.
you make it noise for stupidism, me, me chest tight, that is why I love it. Teddy, I love this, everything about you. The hugging, the thumping me saying how much you love us. Teddy, you will remember how light-hearted you were and how you love enjoying yourself. Bro, the Teddy will always miss you. But I have so many wonderful memories of you. I will think of you with a smile. Rest in peace, my one and only brother. Text, let's hold on. That you are no more. You have thrown hundreds of us into untoward agony, tears, pains, and gloom. You have created a vacuum that will take our family years to fill. I can see you now. Coming from the mountains, using your cutlass, beating your water boots, you will take off your shoe, you will come in. You cool your feet, you will wash your hands and feet. For some reason, just at the time when I'm sharing food, you will say to me, Nick, you will share a piece of that in here. Though we had our differences as siblings do, I never shun you. We work in PSV together, you as a gardener, for many years. By many of your, by, for your great works. You are proud of yourself, as most of your videos and pictures will show. You give your nieces and nephews. There was never a dull moment when you were around with them. You always find ways to make them laugh. Can I have my neighbors who always listen for a rack of paper? And I always think it's a sweetie. She will say to uncle, where are you going? And you will tell her, boy, Zoe, when I get on your fear now, I think I get sweetie. Then you will have, then you will take her up to the shop. You will always put Kayla to sit on your lap. Many times you will talk to her about school, advising her on what to do in her book whether it be a math problem or otherwise. Anyone that was around you would have learned something from you. Your memories will forever linger in our hearts and minds, for I am truly happy that whenever we spend the time together, I will always be ready and take a picture with you. Always and forever in our
that you are part of our lives and your memories will remain with us. You have now gone to the great beyond and I will forever love and keep you in my heart, my lady Tim. Love always on the next. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is a tribute for my one and only brother, our teddy bear in Florence. Brother is often a role model for a sibling and a protector. For a sister, a brother is both of these things. And being the oldest sibling in a pack of five, I can truly say my brother has been more than our protector. You have been the only slice of cheese packed between four slices of bread, and that made us a pack of five. Being our one and only brother, you all still are, and will forever be The last Sunday before you went to the great beyond, you called me five times, but I missed your calls because I was church. After, I, after church, After making inquiries, I was told you were not feeling well, and I was told where you were. My heart is so broken, now knowing that you wanted to tell me you were not feeling well, and I did not pick up. When I finally got to you, you did not have enough strength to talk to me. You kept looking at me, and every time I ended the call, you called back and stared at me more as if you wanted to tell me goodbye. I thought you were going to pull through and come back to us, but it was not meant to be. I thought we had more time, which would allow us to grow old together and talk about the good and bad things we used to do to our parents and each other and laugh until our sides hurt. Never in my wildest dream did I imagine you were on the home stretch to grow in. You were the constant male figure in my son's lives as their dad migrated when they were very young to see Queen Apache's You stepped in and you stepped up to make sure they were raised well. You were the one who taught them to ride their first bike without using the balance wheels, even though Chad had to compete with you to ride his own bike. You were the one who taught them to do push-ups, and you and Dominic used to laugh at Chad when he found it hard to master the art. He used to fall flat on his chest like a dead chicken, but she never gave up on him. Man, Uncle Teddy, when I grow up, I want to be big and strong just like you. My Dominic said those words to you when he was in kindergarten, and this only goes to show how much you are admired by him. Those words stuck with you, and every time you spoke to them, you were sure to remind them of how much they inspired you to do good and that you thought of them, it, sorry, that when you thought of them, it made your heart smile. They said they would too. They indeed became bigger and stronger than you, and it was always a more social for the three of them on the phone. I have no more brother to call, as that was what you were famous for. Every one of us, including your nieces and nephews, had an aim. That Wednesday morning, when I called to see if there were any changes in your condition overnight, my life changed forever. I heard my sister screaming for you, and right then and there, I felt as if someone ripped my heart from my chest. In the stillness of the night, you took your last breath, and we did not get to say goodbye. Now everyone is gathered here today to bid their final farewell to you and I am shattered in a million pieces that I am not there in person to touch you and to kiss your lifeless cheek one last time. Thank you for being my brother. Thank you for loving me the way you did. Thank you for helping me raise my sons the best way you know how. I know life will be forever changed as I love having my one and only brother more than anything. Although we all feel that Ted was taken far too soon from this world, 
I know that he lives a beautiful life and I will miss him every day for the rest of my life. We will meet again, my brother, but for now, take your rest in perfect peace. I will forever love you, my one and only teddy bear, as there will never be another like you. Forever, your big sister, Florence. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. God is good and all the time. God is good. In spite of our situation, we are here to pay our last respect. But we are also here to give God praise and thanks. Amen? Amen, somebody. So we're going to sing some and the glory that is due unto his name. Amen? So if you feel to stand to your feet, you are at liberty. Blessed in the name of the Lord. My soul say yes, Lord, yes. My soul say yes. Oh 
the time we'll continue the rest of the program with open tributes at the time those wishing to do so. We are asking you kindly to move as close forward as possible. The allotted time I was told is five minutes. So please don't be too lengthy because as many folks as possible would like the opportunity to speak. So if you wish to do so, please move forward. I think we're going to have a first tribute from the tech team upstairs. After that, you are free to move forward and do so. Yeah, for 
I'm shaking. I feel sad. You know, many people said, I am young. I can't give my life to Christ as yet. Something, you're not too young to die. Should get call us on to let you know. I was saved. Should we ask ourselves a question? Who is saved? Or should God call us home? Where are we going to spend eternity? Oh, yes. We have to ask ourselves the questions and do the things that are right and pleasing unto God's side. Because one day, Jesus is coming again. He said, A trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning bright, eternal, bright and fair, when the shoes and white shall get us, and the home we have left gone. You have to question, will you be there? You have to say, The song when you say, There's a great coming. When the saints and the sinners shall be part of right and left, are you ready, brothers and sisters? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be strong, my brothers and sisters. Cry if you have to cry. Nothing is wrong in crying. But be strong and in the power of His mind. Shall we be?
farming. And boy, did he make it look easy as he loved the lands wholeheartedly. Dashings and Edo's for his babies. And only one person was sure to get first choice in buying his products. And testify to this. Over the years, we all watched in awe as he excelled in his farming, producing more and more crops each time. But always, everyone was amazed at how he would dig the land for his crops and kept it ever so clean. All the farmers wanted a piece of him. And so he couldn't catch a break from them wanting him to dig their lands as they prepared to plant again. Ted worked the lands up to the time of his death. Ted was a loving, caring, and ambitious young man. One of his biggest flaws was when it comes to Alice's. His favorite line was, nobody's doing anything to my people and get off, you know? He was the best protector any sister can ever ask for. There were times when there were sibling quarrels and he would really get upset and raise his voice when his young sisters were going off track and he was sure to call his two older sisters and complain before anyone else did. Growing up in a household with not have to fight for his mother's affection as he was referred to as the spoiled child or mommy's boy by his sisters and other relatives who were close to him. When he left for the lands early in the morning, his lunch or dinner was already ready and waiting for him on the table. Ted did not have any kids of his own, but his nieces and his nephews met the world to him. Ted gave all of them nicknames. Good afternoon, everyone. Look how beautiful you all look. All of us, look how beautiful. And then I'm so proud. The support that you all have been given. 
for this young man. This is so nice. This is what I like to see. I must let you all know, I am a student. I'm a manual. And the brothers that represent him, the manual and the student, is my uncle. I can remember when I used to be at Richard Park, the Stephen Emmanuel family was about 35%. Now look at the Stephen Emmanuel family in Richard Park and in Mesopotamia. It's about a thousand percent. <laughs> generation to generation. I'm sorry. But that you all know, I, my name is Stanley Stephen. This is my brother, Franklin Stephen. We belong to Richard Park, but we live in Redemption Sharks. And I and my brother live in the United States. And this badge that I have on, I'm here for the same reason. My eldest brother in the family and my father's side had died. And this is what this is why we are here. And we are here, we get the news that a family of ours in Richard Park had been passed away. And I say, my brother, to call my brother, we have to come here and give you support. And this is not the only time we come in here. I come here every year. And I make sure I call my family in with some power and let them know we are coming up with a business. They will pay, pay for us and I will come. I will bring my call from St. from 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 our redemption chat and come and share my love with my family up in Mr. Park. One thing that the lady speak a while ago about 10. As a dancer, I am sorry that I didn't meet him before. And I can show him what quick is all about. The reason why I say that I have a quick tea. And every year I bring three or four people from St. Vincent to the United States to play cricket with me. And dancing, if he was there, I could show him a lot of steps because that's what I do as a dancer. I was sit, I, I, I know the time is short, but I must say thank you very much. The, 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 the minister and the 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 the, 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 man, the priest, the one this temple. I'm so happy to see. You. That we all could gather under a shelter like this that we could give to our life to God. Amen. I'm so happy to see you all. I'm going to go to the I'd like to say a pleasant good evening to the spirit of Almighty God, who is going to this evening to the minister and the staff. To each and every family member, to friends and family, brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening. You know, standing here is a privilege for the first time, and to see a children a going home at Thanksgiving for a blessed son of the Lamb. I give God thanks and praise that I get the opportunity to come here, see my brother pass last Saturday and to bury him last Saturday. But you know, even though it's sweet, it's sour. The reason why I say that, when I look at the congregation and how happy everyone is to see a Christian eyes, no answer made. 
what I see and what God revealed to me, this birth, family of man, make his election show. We got to ask yourself a question. And the question we're going to ask, where will I spend eternity, 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 eternity,
Thank you very much, the media. And uh, sometimes I wish I could sing like that. Try. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, though we have been blessed, leaving the spa, it's, it's cool inside. I want to extend my own condolences to uh, to all of us who have come to show our solidarity. We have gathered here this afternoon to pay our last respect to a friend or brother. who has spent only a few years with us. Some might say gone too soon. He didn't live to realize his full potential. Oh. Or to make any significant contribution to the society and to the nation as a whole. Whatever contribution he would have made, I'm sure that it will be a and will be long remembered by those who he had impacted. The reality, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is that his 90 minutes on the field on the football field is over. But we continue to play on. I see so many young people here today and I know that they would be here. I want to say to you especially as we continue to linger here a little longer on this we must remain cognizant of the dangerous social environment in which we live and we need to understand that in this environment There are many who are calling, seeking a helping hand. We need to lend, extend our hand to someone who might be struggling. On those on a daily basis, brothers and sisters, we continue to be alarmed by the strange occurrences in our society. Over the last couple of weeks, there were so many strange and untimely deaths. I wish to use this occasion, brothers and sisters, to highlight the need for us as a community to become more loving and caring. Are you with me this afternoon? First, let me remind us that we are living in a time that was predicted by the Bible. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, it says, But know this, know this, understand this, that in the last days, for men shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bosses, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors. Ah, brothers and sisters, hearty, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, the Bible says in the last days.
this morning, while coming here as I reach Anna's Bay, I told there was a beach somewhere by the old Taman. I never see more description of that suit. I didn't even see any kind. Jeez! That's what the Bible talks about in the last days. Are we together now? You call the cruise in and you say, come. You say, man, I have to eat one more time. But when the fact went, and you're supposed to wear nothing, behave, behave dirty, behave rude, behave worthless. Come on, know somebody. When the instruction given by the teacher is like that, everybody follow. Are you still with me? Well, I'm glad we have a wet fit today. Rain falling. So hear me now. The Bible tells us this is what's going to happen in the last days. The population, the nation, men and women are going to be more concerned about, about the gratification now. Sex, money, music, whining, dancing, having a good time, smoking, drinking. Somebody, are you with me? But I want to talk to young people today. The Bible says this is going to happen. But hear me now. You don't have to fulfill the prophecy. The wise man Solomon says that you need to remember your creator. Somebody help me now. In the days of your young life, are with me? See, because these days of, of your youth is, is, is these are good days, you know. If you lend them to the Lord. Amen. But these things can be perilous, depends on what you do with yourself. If you take yourself and do what the teacher says, I, I couldn't sleep two, two weeks ago because there was a wet fit in my ear in 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 the clinic. And whole night. So we're going to finish at 4:30, 4:30. But before that, he says, when we get to 4 o'clock. We mashing up this place. Oh, have mercy. We mashing up this place. This place never not good again. They say yes. I want somebody to say yes to Jesus this afternoon. In the last days, lovers of pleasures, more than. <laughs> Let me just say something else about that activity today because I couldn't see the whole night until morning. 4 30 came, he said, One more, one more, one more, one more, just one more. start getting heavy because he is consumed of the heart throughout the night. Five o'clock is when the things start. The man on the microphone, the patrons, the ladies on the dress and what he saw and all that. Come on, young man. Ladies, you have to pack a little bit more decency. Come on. Somebody need to talk to Somebody need to talk to somebody. Have a little bit more decency now. But the Bible says, in the last days, Jesus knew about what was going to take place here. And I want to just switch this and put it in a context. Five. When Jesus spoke about a friend who came to his friend, and not at midnight. These things that were described, ladies and gentlemen, in the last days, I am putting them in the context 
of midnight. Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give you the bread because of his friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, your desire to stick to it until you get what you want, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, in this parable, the time when the friend came, Seeking help from his friend was at midnight. You may ask the question, why midnight? You see, Jesus wanted to impress upon our minds the seriousness of the time that will come upon us. Are you still looking? Midnight, brothers and sisters, is that period of night when most legitimate activities cease. Follow me now, we're in the outside. Midnight is the time when all legitimate activities cease. It is a time when those who, who are bent on evil emerge to do their dirty work to discomfort others. Midnight, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, represent a period of hopelessness. Of what? Hopelessness. Midnight represents a period of hopelessness, of perils, of frustration, of disappointment, and desperation. Midnight. Say with me, say with me, midnight represents a time of moral decay, such as we talked about a while ago. It spoke about Paul, spoke about, it's a time of dishonesty, unfairness, and wickedness. That's midnight. In the parable, it comes and his trusted friends house on behalf of a friend who came to him and was hungry. Now follow me here brothers and sisters. This man who got out of his bed to go to night he was in difficulty as well because he says a friend of mine on his journey came to me and I don't have anything to give him to eat. This triangular relationship calls for some explanation for me now. Friend number one went to his friend to inform him of his friend's situation and his need of help. But notice that friend number one is in need as well. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, at this midnight hour, we are all in trouble. At this midnight hour, we have, we all have issues. Are you with me still? Are you with me there? At this midnight hour, everybody has a problem. Every I 
don't have much to help you, but I will see what I could do. Are you still with me? This mutual friend, this friend number two, got up out of his bed and went knocking on his friend's door. What I like about this friend, this mutual friend, in spite of the fact that it was late, the parable says, that the friend who went knocking kept on knocking persistently until the friend got up and offered him the loaves. The friend who was sleeping at midnight, who was rudely interrupted, could have said, listen to me. I am inside with my family. Oh, anybody, why are you disturbing my sleep? The brothers and sisters, he didn't do that. He didn't say that. The Bible says he got up and gave the friend who came knocking what he had. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we have come to a dark period in the history of the world. The events of the last couple of weeks in this country have shown that we are experiencing perilous times. Brothers and sisters, in our neighborhood who are brave, are you still with me? We need some friends in our schools, in our churches, in our community who are brave. Some friends who would say, I'm not going to sit here and watch evil and sin. We need some brave people who would say, you know what, this brother, this sister is being abused. I need to get some. For her. All you need to do is to make a and come and help. We have come to this midnight hour in our lives, and so friends need to look out for one another. Members of the church need to look out for one another. Whether you're a member or not, let's look out for one another. This is midnight. A time of depression. There are many desperate people roaming the streets every day. Desperate people who can just do with someone saying a good word of comfort to them. We are in the midnight. Oh. Now, the friend who went out at midnight was not to concern about his own poverty. But he cared about his friend. He could have said, listen to me. Boy, you come at a wrong time. If you only had come a little earlier, I would have organized some things for you. But it ain't now. It's midnight up there, and robbers and bandits are on the streets. So I, I, I can, I'm sorry, I didn't wait until the morning. But the friend got up out of his house at midnight and went to a trusted friend whom he knew he was going to get something from. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, at this midnight hour, we need networking. At this midnight hour, we need to look out for one another. We used to do that one time. Times have changed, but the principles still remain the same. The Bible says that we must have love one for another. He was not careful about his own safety. He did not say, I'm not going because I don't want to become a victim. He did not say, I'm not going because I don't know what's going to happen out there. He put aside his own safety and he went out on behalf of his friend. Sometimes 
There is someone close to me who could do well with a word of counsel. Someone may be close to you who is on the brink of committing suicide. But you say, well, I hear I see you are on the left. I feel he likes no mind. If you can help somebody as you travel along, if you can help somebody with a word of song, if you can tell somebody, listen, you're going to brothers and sisters will not be in vain. Let's be a neighbor today. A good neighbor, good friend. Because we are living in the midnight hour. Now, my friend went and looked for three loaves. I want to put names on these loaves. One, the bread of hope. People are becoming depressed and hopeless. They're turning in a different direction for help without lasting success. Sometimes to alcohol, sometimes turn to drugs, sometimes to sex, party. Oh, but with no lasting effect. Sometimes we have to go out of our way to seek for help for someone. Sometimes we have to be like a friend who is in his own poverty, left his home to go seek food for his friend. Sometimes we have to be like this mutual friend who was well asleep at midnight when he was rudely interrupted, but he woke up nonetheless. We will seek to offer the bread of hope. Let a listen here to someone. Offer some word of counsel to someone and let them know that Jesus still cares. Call somebody on your phone, WhatsApp somebody, and pray with somebody. Instead of sending foolish pictures or gossip, send a word of encouragement to somebody. Offer them the bread of hope. The second word. We're never like to it with compassion. Some demonstrate by kind deeds that you care. Don't just say the seraphim. No wish me to help. If you can help, find somebody who can help and make sure you offer the help. Are you still with me today? Don't just walk away. Watch your brother die or sister die. Somebody in desperate. And say, God, God, I'm gonna help you. But God just sent you to help him. The man in the story didn't have any bread to offer his friend, so he opened his door at midnight and went knocking by another friend. Not for bread for himself, but for his friend. Are you, are you getting me? Do you remember? Too many people hurting all around us, and sometimes we act as we don't care. I don't care once my once my children go. I go. I don't care about you. They are family. Take care of you. In fact, you take all the money and you spend it on, and now we have nothing. That's not your business. Need some food now? Give them some food. Are you still with me? Need a helping hand to get more now. Need some juice to drink, yes, give them a cup. Now the cup you don't throw it, you don't have a cup. Uh, are you still with me now? Yes, 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 yes. So this friend got up at midnight. Got up at now, sometimes we have the tendency, I will give him a cup because I was going to throw a cup anyhow. Hello, you know what Jesus says? As much as you have done it unto the least of my brethren, you know it to me. So if you give the person who came to you juice in a cup that you were going to throw away, you know what you're doing? You give Jesus juice in a cup. You will go throw away. Let's be nice. When you got up at midnight, went all the way to the spring. 
we need to offer the bread of compassion. Do you remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Came down the street after the priest and Levi passed and left the man on the road bleeding to death. He looked over, saw the man's plight. Not only look and move, but he looked down and touched him. He looked at him bandage up his wounds. He looked down and saw him in desperation, saw that he needed compassion, and he offered him compassion. And so with me today. Now, show compassion morally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. There are many wounded souls on the road. Many wounded souls at this desperate hour. There are many wounded souls at this midnight hour right here. And I want to let you know that there is someone who cares about your desperation. I want to let you know that Jesus cares about your sorrows. He cares about your pain. Right now, you might be saying, I don't know if anyone knows what I'm going through. But I can tell you, whether I don't know, and anyone he doesn't know, I can tell you for sure, Jesus knows about all your troubles. Does Jesus care, the songwriter asks? Oh, yes, he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. The bread of compassion we need to show. The physical bread. Do you have folks in the neighborhood? That's the third bread. Who need a piece of food from you? Be a friend to somebody today. Give some hungry soul something to eat. The Bible says, For I was hungry. And it didn't give me. And it didn't feed me. That's Jesus speaking here in the parable. I was thirsty. You didn't give me drink. I was a stranger. You didn't invite me in your house. To life. Can't come in here. Can we go good camping? We don't pay for it as yet. You must be mad. No. I was naked. And you didn't give me clothing. I was sick in prison. And you did not visit me. Oh, friends, we need to be our neighbors, our neighbors keep us. We need to look out for our neighbors. Sometimes people in the community are sick and we don't go until they're dead. <laughs> and then we say, I don't know, I've been sick, I've got to look for them. You can't be too busy when it's dead at midnight. Wherever time it is, we must seek to look out for one another because we are living in a desperate period. This is our midnight. Jesus answered and said, I will answer. I tell you the truth, when you refuse to help the least of my brethren and my sisters, you are refusing me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Finally, I want to give you the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. This is the commodity that we all need. Sin has messed up our lives. By the sense that the wages of sin is death. By the sense that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And today, brothers and sisters, because of sin, we are hungry, desperate, and thirsty. But Jesus says, Come on to me. I'm a bread of life. You're tired today, you're frustrated today, you're depressed today. Come on to me. All your labor and your heavenly rest. Come, I will give you. When you rest, I'll give you what you need for your survival, not physically only, but spiritually. Oh, sin has created a deep hunger inside, even when we have plenty to eat. Belly full, but you're still starving. We need spiritual bread. I give you Jesus today. 
Jesus gives the invitation and says, Come, your people today, you may not see the need for Jesus. Your people today, you will not be hearing me. Start. Back and up, no, start. And they have taken to that again. What they say? Take your eyes again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, you know, really, let me tell you something, you know. I am not any prophet, and I, I refuse to be associated with any prophet. But the way things are going, and the way people are living reckless, young people especially. By the time this is over, is somebody going to go in? Yeah. Somebody might just go. This morning, I'm coming down Castle Hill. I don't know where this car was going up and down, but it's over the drain like that. And all of them in the back seem to by the by the so all of us stupid. Whole net. And then the little mother coming can see the road. Listen, this is the midnight hour. I'm warning you. This is the midnight hour. The part you're planning to go to. The costume you're planning to, to wind up in. Watch me. This is the midnight hour. And the devil is probably out there. He is waiting for somebody. He knows that he has a short time. Watch yourself. I beg you today. I beg you today, my young friends. Remember the creator in the day. Right now. Today. Because not long from now. The skies will unfold. Not long from now, our Savior will be. Not long from now, He will burst the outer skies. Not long from now, brothers and sisters, He will call for those who made a commitment to Him. I want to make a call here today before I close the service. This might be my last sermon here. Yeah. I don't know. Teddy God, Teddy was only Teddy something. I'll make a great deal of people today. I know this is not really in the service. But you want to say, God, I want you to take my life. There's a young person who likes to say, Lord, take my life. Just start to your feet. Yes, somebody. One person stand and others are going to stand. Come, stand. Yes, 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 yes. Young people, wherever you are, stand to your feet. All the young people today, stand to your feet. Young people today, whether you have costume or no costume, stand up for Jesus today. Stand up, 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 stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand to your feet. Have you got a here today? Where you are, if you're outside, push your head inside here. Stand up. In the back row, stand up. If I want you, stand to your feet. This is a midnight hour. This is a crisis hour. This is the time when the devil is most serious. He has a hit on somebody in this midnight hour. Hold your friend hand and tell him stand up. Hold your sister hand. Tell him stand up this midnight hour. We need a friend who could encourage him in Jesus. This midnight hour. After this hour. After the dark. There is going to be the dawn. If you're going through some struggle, I'm talking to everybody now, you can stand. And I want to say to the Lord, please, I'm in my darkest hour. I need your hands. Stand to your feet, somebody. Quickly, you want to close up the service. Lord, maybe somebody, some friend of yours, you know going through some struggle. You want to be able to help that friend. Stand to your feet on behalf of the friend today.
Somebody give God some praise today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to this hour is a desperate hour. Amen. This hour is an hour of pain and suffering and anguish. But this hour is an hour of jubilee as well. The friend got his three loaves and was able to share them with his friend. I share with you today, Jesus. I share with you today, Jesus. Confess your sins where you stand. Talk to Jesus now where you stand. Nobody has to near you to me that. Just do that. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come into your life. Do that now. This is a crucial. Your people, the young people, I stood up in this funeral service. Not a place where you usually do these kind of stuff, but they stood up, Lord. Thank you for the working of your spirit. And now, as they standing on their feet, Lord. Indicating, Lord, the need of blessing in your life. Indicating, Lord, that they are in need of the bread of hope, the bread of compassion, the bread of life, even the physical bread. Open your pantry, Lord, today and pull them down the blessings that they need. Oh God, save somebody today. Save somebody today. Somebody's at the edge. Somebody's hungry. Somebody is desperate. Somebody's been harassed by the devil. Save somebody today. Right now, oh God. Right now. Please, somebody, claim your victory. In Jesus' name, claim your victory. Amen. And Father, we pray that you will keep us safe. Because the darkest hour that Thank you. 
world. At this time, I invite the family members to gather together as you can, closer to the past it, and you can hold each other's hand as you have this prayer of comfort for the family. Then we sing our closing songs. So family members, if you can draw close to each other, if you would like to, it's the best thing to do, and so that we can close relatives and friends. Yes, family that prays together, stay, stays together. So stay close in front of them.
and his service today. In Jesus
Yeah, I
you guys, no problem. And your choice mm. is almost easy. Mm. Good?
went, I was going to go down. When I did touch, I touch me.